Hello and welcome to another Seed Talk in the Naturally Conscious Community. Today we have Patty Hindie. Patty has engaged with diverse groups since high school. She loves people and has evolved from one life experience to another. The result is an expansive general knowledge, building barbed wire, fences, belly dancing, a CPA, taxes, all while being a wife, mother, and a traveler. So Patty really loves the adventure called life. Now today, she's going to be sharing one of her biggest adventures with us, which is all about the three lessons she learned from quail and her baby. This is a walkabout, a rite of passage. And as an American middle-aged woman, she uses this to express where she has left behind everyday life and embark on a journey to deliberately, consciously create her life. What began as a year off from light, light of life, but you know, life almost, light almost. What began as a year off from life became a year of transformation. Patty, we're really looking forward to hearing all about you, Quail, and her baby. <laughs> Thanks to Grilla. Oh boy, what a journey it was. So in December of 2018, I made a decision to create my life by stepping out of it and taking what I called a walkabout. I wanted to live the universal principles, the theory of quantum physics, and my deepening, expanding spiritual beliefs instead of just study them. So by early 2019, I had several books, trips booked. I had workshops, seminars, classes in healing modalities, a two-week meditation retreat, and I was finishing off my walkabout with a walking the Camino de Assisi in Italy. This was all scheduled from June of 2019 through June of 2020. And I decided my walkabout would begin officially on June 1st, 2019 at a weekend workshop in Berkeley, California. And that was a conscious, very serious, planned out decision on my part. However, the universe started laughing. So on June 3rd, I was rear-ended in a car accident. And while that wasn't the first car accident in my life, my physical experience was different. And I felt a part of myself observing everything with curiosity. I said, well, this is really interesting. Why now? I hugged the man who hit me. It was his first car accident. And I went through the drill of exchanging information. I decided to started to drive off thinking I could just continue on my errands when I kind of heard, sensed, felt that I needed to stop and call for help and go to the hospital. I, my son came and picked me up and took me to the ER. When we got there and checked in, it was super busy. Ambulance after ambulance came in. And I sat there in the waiting room still <laughs> wondering, now why, why is this happening now? All of a sudden it was as if I woke up and I looked at my son and I said, hey, I said, why don't we just go to urgent care? So we checked out of ER, went to urgent care, got to urgent care, got right in, x-rays completed, eva evaluation done, sent on my way with some pain medication. So while he went to the pharmacy to pick up the pain medication, I waited in the car and I got a phone call from the urgent care. Uh, Mrs. Hindia, the radiologist took a closer look at your x-ray and he thinks you might have a fractured neck. So we've called ER, they're expecting you, and we'd like you to go there and, and get a MRI of your neck. Said, okay. Uh, so there we go, back to, back to ER. <laughs> Got to ER, they checked me in, they put a cervical collar around my neck, and I went into pain. It's been about nine hours since that car accident, and I've had no ice, no type of pain medication, and I was really feeling it by that time. So while the nurse was prepping me, I asked for if I could take the med pain medication. He goes, I've got you covered, and he gave me a shot. <laughs> and while that went to work, I start talking to him, and I said, hey, I go, you know, you're going to witness a miracle today that I don't have a fractured neck. I have things to do, and a fractured neck just doesn't fit into my plans right now. 
So he's laughing and I go in and I couldn't get an MRI. MRI machine was broken, so I got a CT scan. And uh, do ER doctor came back in and he said, well, Mrs. India, uh, good news, you don't have a fractured neck. And I'm like high fi and the nurse going, see, told you, miracle. He says, however, we did find something in your head along the cranial margin of the pineal gland and we think you need to take a look at that. Um, I said, oh, well, um, gee, I've got a workshop this weekend and I'm leaving for Europe next week. Can we take care of that in July? And my son just blew up. He goes, mom, aren't you listening to him? They found something, it's in your head. So you could say that I was high <laughs> on medication, which is partially true. But most importantly, I was trying to figure out my own life. And, and this wasn't something that I had intended. And my intention was to consciously create my life, which brought me to the first lesson of Quail, which was the choice to think differently. I chose not to take the possible serious medical findings so seriously. I let go of attachment to what the medical terms being used could mean, to what the ER doctor had to say, possible diagnosis, and then later the reactions of my family and friends. Everybody had an opinion about the possibilities and what I should do. But as the story's advice and opinion started, I saw very clearly that there was nothing to do until the next step. And the next step, or in this case, the first step, was to schedule an MRI. In the two days that I had available between my weekend workshop and before my scheduled trip to Europe. But sure enough, the day before I left for Europe, I had received both the approval and the appointment to have an MRI. So now there was nothing to do, no definitive information known, so I chose to continue on with my planned walkabout and a trip to Europe. That was my next step. I went to Glastonbury, England for two weeks. I spent the time learning an unusual healing modality, touring the Glastonbury Abbey, visiting the Chalice Well, climbing the tour, and visiting stone circles. It was a wonderful trip. I left Glastonbury and I headed for first Germany. From Glastonbury to Germany, I met up with my daughter in Frankfurt. We left her flat early the next morning for a trip to Mallorca, Spain for a mother-daughter trip. We were celebrating our birthdays and just enjoying a special time together as she now lived in Europe. Once back in Germany, I met her boyfriend who took us on a tour of Frankfurt. And then the day before I left Germany or Europe, well, on my birthday, <laughs> I received the MRI report that I had two meningenomas and that I needed to make an appointment with a neurosurgeon to consult and go over the MRIs. My daughter made sure that I didn't leave Germany without the name and number of a neurosurgeon. I'd also felt the beginnings of UTI on that last day in Germany, so I scheduled an appointment on my app with my primary doctor for the day I got back to the US. As it turned out, the doctor who did see me was the same doctor who had reviewed and sent the MRI report to me, that very same doctor that I had to consult with before I could get a referral to a neurosurgeon. So synchronistically, the next steps were taken care of, the consultation and the referral to the neurosurgeon and my UTI. <laughs> so we were, there were six of us in the waiting room to discuss the MRI results with the neurosurgeon. There was my son, my daughter was on the phone, my two sisters and my spouse who all came with me to my consultation with the neurosurgeon. And the neurosurgeon went over the MRI film and explained what the, that the large mass was the size of a quail egg. It was causing displacement of the spolenial corpus callosum, and the internal cerebral vein was rightward, rightward displaced along the mass. Quail, as I quickly named the mass, also had a baby. One mass was not unusual. Two masses caused more concern as did the displacement of the cerebral vein. 
the tumors or meningenomas, while common in women of my age, are usually benign. However, Quail was in a precarious location and she had a baby. As before in the ER, I had an opportunity to stress out and get attached to the diagnosis. Oh my God, I have a brain tumor. I have two brain tumors. I have to have brain surgery. And yet I, I didn't get attached. I chose to name Quail and her baby rather than use the terminology tumors or meningenomas as the medical staff called them interchangeably. My family felt I was being flippant and not respecting the doctors and, and the dangers that they were discussing. And I felt their fear was closing the field of possibility. So I stopped listening. <clears throat> and the neurosurgeon told me that we had another step. We had to take a cerebral angiogram to determine the blood flow around quail and her baby and from that, the possible type or grade of the mass. I made the choice at that point to cancel my meditation retreat. I was listening and I realized that I was prudent to have this test completed in a timely manner. The angiogram was explained as a necessary precursor to gather more information before the first of two possible surgeries. And what I missed in that cerebral angiogram conversation was that the findings during that procedure could lead to immediate brain surgery on the table. I was given release papers to sign authorizing the possibility of brain surgery. And yes, I felt both fear and attachment. I called the doctor with questions. Here I was in the hospital prepped to go in and I had no idea for a moment how to proceed and I froze. Every other step had been in flow, the answers coming, the choices made easily and effort effortlessly, but signing the release was not easy until I remembered faith and that I was creating my life. So I took a deep breath and I felt my body relax and let go. And I tapped back into that sense of awareness that had been with me since the accident and I signed the papers. I was choosing to think differently without fear, creating my life because I was on a walkabout. And without going into more detail regarding consultations and tests, I'd like to get to the point of my next lesson. And that was the choice to think differently. To choose to accept without attachment changed me physiologically. I stayed in a calm state, almost joyful without stress throughout my discovery process. Except for the day I learned the next lesson. Lesson number two, stay in the present moment. <clears throat> My neurosurgeon had discussed the findings from the cerebral angiogram and his surgery recommendations. The first brain surgery would be a topper or a no-brainer as we joked about Quell's baby. This first surgery would give us information on how we needed to proceed safely with the second, more complex brain surgery to remove Quell. The nurse gave me the paperwork with the doctor's recommendations, um, including what to expect after brain surgery. So I called my sister, who has the medical background, to help me decipher all the me medical terminology, and so she could explain it to the family. <laughs> and she asked me to read the reports to her. So I'm blah, 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 I'm reading to her. Until the discussion of post-surgery pain and medication and my entire physiological, physical, emotional body reacted. I started crying and actually almost became hysterical. There was no way I was gonna have two major brain surgeries. And the joke regarding Quill's baby being a topper and a no-brainer was just no longer funny. Because I had a history of n low pain tolerance, meaning no pain tolerance. And it was a real story to me. And I freaked out when stitches were removed. So throughout the discovery and journey of Quail and her baby, I'd been calm, laughing, joking, flowing from step to step. Until this next stop, possible step, surgery followed by pain was introduced. So I can't say what led me to walk outside, but sobbing, I hung up the phone with my sister and walked to the front door. I opened the door 
and there was the oak tree in the front of our house. I looked up at the blue sky and I noticed the warm breeze and I realized <laughs> I was freaking out about something that wasn't even real. In the moment, I was standing on my front porch on a warm sunny day staring at an oak tree with the leaves gently waving in the breeze. And in the short time that it took for me to open the front door, step outside, notice my surroundings, and come to the realization that I was reacting to a pain I wasn't even experiencing, my life changed. You know, Eckhart Tolle was spot on, the power of now. In a moment, by putting myself back in the present, I stepped away from the fear. And in the moment, there was no pain to fear. And I started laughing as I reflected on lesson number three, being aware of the awareness. So I mentioned I had the feeling of observation, of awareness that began on that day of the car accident. And this feeling of being aware didn't stop. It felt like a loving presence was looking over my shoulder, guiding and supporting me. By choosing to think differently, lesson number one, I opened myself up to an alternative possibility. I opened up, and by choosing, sorry, <laughs> and I opened up the space to allow an awareness to be present. And by staying present in lesson number two, I allowed the awareness to permeate my thoughts and choices, and they were unblocked from fear. <clears throat> there are many words that can describe spirituality words used to define that what is it the i am god the absolute universe spirit allah consciousness father in heaven none of those words mattered in lesson number three <clears throat> what let mattered was my experience becoming aware of that awareness i became to experience an orchestrated chain of events around me in the most amazing loving flow I was aware of the steps and the decision tree that took place after each one, decisions made in seconds, almost without thought. And I was aware of the moment I constricted with fear and my connection to that awareness snapped. It was a physical reaction. But the moment I became aware of oak and sun and wind, and I made the choice to step out of fear into the present, that awareness flowed through me once again. And you can call it what you will, and I can only describe it in terms of the experience that I had, that there was a wholeness to my life, requiring me, requiring me in a sense to include Quail and her baby in it. Nothing was separate without connection. I couldn't think about killing this part of me while I was in the midst of learning and experiencing the gifts their presence gave me. I was aware of other forces guiding me and opening to receiving those messages. So an alternative to surgery appeared. I could choose CyberKnife Radiation, a computer program designed for brain tumors, reducing the radiation splatter. And per that doctor of oncology radiology, the radiation would create a crystal-like shell around the tumors, and that would kill them by effectively cutting off all blood supply and nutrient. They would always show up on an MRI because they could not break down and assimilate into the body. So I asked the doctor what decision she would make if it were her. And she looked at me and she said none. She said the radiation could negatively alter the cells. And at this point, I had no symptoms. She would wait. Her gift of honesty opened another door and gave me another word I took into my healing, crystallize. Quail, her baby, and I were partners, and I was given permission by a doctor to pursue other healing modalities. My family's tension all relaxed because the doctor said it was okay to do nothing. But that's not what I did. I was given the name of a chiropractor who, utilizing applied kinesiology and now, <laughs> or neuroorganization work, he began working with me. He helped by redirecting my immune system and tracking the neurotoxins which are present in the body with these types of growths. I could visualize my immune system surrounding quail in a beautiful crystallized shell. And today, 
I no longer have a trace of a neurotoxin in my body, and the subsequent MRIs have shown no change in the size of Quail or her baby. So I remind you that I had a choice to go on a walkabout, to consciously create my life for a year, utilizing the science and spiritual principles I had learned. And I can say without a doubt that my soul, God, gave me the gift of Quail and her baby. I asked for what I wanted, I opened myself up to receive, and I could not have imagined the gifts that would come from this resulting journey. So I can go on for hours <laughs> listing all the ways these three lessons have influenced me and my life, but I'd rather leave you with the lessons that I have learned and offer you the opportunity to use them and experience them for yourself without the need for dramatic circumstances. Lesson number one, the choice to think differently, change your physiology, be open to possibility. Lesson number two, stay in the present moment in the true reality with no fear, stay expanded. Lesson number three, aware of the awareness, allow that possibility that there is a higher consciousness to permeate your life experiences and your choices in the moment. So I wish you light, love, and laughter. Thank you. Beautiful, Patty. Thank you so much. I am hope that you all enjoyed this as much as I did. And I am looking forward to hearing your feedback about what you think about quail and her baby. Bye. Thank you.